Hey everyone, I'm back. Um, we're working again today with some of the resin art epoxy paint. Uh, it is a dry epoxy paint where we have preconditioned the color and the minerals. They dissolve very, very quickly in the resin. I have one, two, three, four, five, six cups with approximately uh, an ounce and a half of resin each, in each one. <clears throat> We're going to do a 16 by 20 black canvas. So um, I'm also testing out some colors for November, um, limited edition, and we'll see how popular they are. I have been asked a lot to make a color similar to our jasmine in the primer element line, which is just a pure, pure, pure hot rhodamine violet. It is more of a neon pink than anything you can imagine, but rhodamine violet, and it mixes beautifully. Actually, I'm gonna use red plum and what will be called wild jasmine, and then working on another gold that is real, 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 real sparkly. Uh, I have yet to name this thing. I really have trouble with golds. So I'm toying around with dazzling uh, with golden diamond because it reminds me of the golden diamonds, um, the actual stone when it's uh, dry. So let's see what it looks like. I have some interference violet here, our bling it violet. Scoot this over. I'm going to make a very, very, very light version of the wild jasmine. I'm just going to put a pinch of this in and add some interference violet so I have a lighter value. The interference will appear a little bit more opaque as I'm working with this, but you will get transparency as it dries. We're also using some black, uh, their uh, base tint, that black base, aluminite white. And the stone coat, art coat, is the resin, oops. <laughs> yes, I do have kitties in my studio here, sorry about that. Uh, this is the stone coat, art coat, um, part A and B. And uh, let's get started. So I use these little taster spoons for measuring. The basic measurement is a 1 8 teaspoon per ounce, and these things hold about an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to put in uh, about a scoop and a half of the golden diamond. I don't really want to contaminate my pink with that gold. So you can wipe the spoons off afterwards real easy with a towel, but I just at this point don't want to mix it in there. So there's the wild jasmine. Now in this, Typically, you will put pure mica underneath. I should have done that to show you guys how to do it because this will, uh, these minerals, are, our regular interference micas have not been preconditioned pre for the resin, so people can use the micas for anything that they want, and this is our interference violet. I'm actually going to put two full scoops of that in there and just a skosh, about a half of one of the wild jasmine. And this is so bright, I'm hoping that's actually not too much of the wild jasmine. I can use that same spoon for the red plum. I'm not worried too much about, uh, and I know I've not done a canvas with red plum yet. This is our deep, deep clean red without it getting bluish. Okay, because reds can be warm, they can be middle of the road, they can be cool. This is deep as I could get a nice, clean, deep red without making it go blue. I got my, going to put in a few drops of the Illuminite White. And warning on this base tint, we use it for effects, but don't use so much. I mean, this is made for countertops, so don't use so much like you think you actually have to paint something black, unless you're going to do like just a base flood coat on something that you want it all black and dry. So I have about an ounce and a half in there and all I've done is kind of coated the tip of the spoon with this. See if I can get it. I just want the resin. There we go. Look how black that is and I barely had any on the spoon. Because my canvas is already black, 
I'm just going to put this on the edges so we can get the effects. The stone coat base tint does create cells. You just have to be very careful not to, to put too much in. Any of the stone coat base tints will create cells. They have red, they've got blue, they've got white, they've got black, they've got some interesting colors, but use it very sparingly if you're looking to make cells in your resin. And then I am going to mix these guys up real quick. This is that Illumini White. This is the, let's see if you can get a close up on this red plum. Now in the camera, it looks like it's picking up burgundy, but it really isn't. This is kind of a clean, 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 deep red. But I'm hoping with one little dash where the, where the wild jasmine runs into it, where this wild jasmine color runs into it, it may mix into a burgundy. And then I can show you guys how you can make a burgundy or a cranberry using the red plum base and other, other, other colors. Now this is a test. I may need to make the, wow. I may need to make it deeper. We'll see if this is too light, a saturation. I just mixed up the test batch and you're seeing on a camera for the very first time how that wild jasmine works. Okay, this is the interference violet with a wild jasmine. I'm gonna stir it very slowly it, it, if I was going to do it correctly, I would have put the interference violet on the bottom, poured in the resin. I could get away with putting the wild jasmine on top because it slips right into that resin. Well, it's almost like a bubblegum pink. Wow, it's really transparent though. All that interference. That's the one thing when you're pouring you might get this milky ethereal look on your canvas and yet you will get transparencies and yet still wispy effects because the resin is uh, viscous and it has multiple layers so there will be some sub opacity and transparency when you mix colors using the interferences. Last color and I'm so curious about this I cannot wait to play with it. Uh, the Golden Diamond I wanted some special stuff in here to make it sparkle. And if it doesn't sparkle enough, I'll add more stuff to make it sparkly. Oh wow, that mixes in beautifully. I'm just looking at it for myself in the light. I just want to see what does it really look like. It's a it's lighter than our dragon gold, lighter than the mystery gold. Like I said, I added some other stuff in here to try to give it some more bling, some more sparkle to your work. It is a very satiny color. I kind of like that, it'll, it'll slip right in. Okay, let's get this thing cleaned up. I'll be right back. Okay, I have my 16 by 20 black canvas. I have uh, pre-painted it with white house paint, sprayed it with black spray paint, and I'm taking a page out of Petra's book. Uh, she put cardboard underneath her canvas to support it in the center. I actually, I'm, I, I could try to show you because these are old painted canvases. The three that are, there's three here is actually already stuck in the back. I have mine stabilized with uh, six by six canvases on each side. These are already up in here. They just kind of opened up that way. We don't know if it's going to close that way. Uh, this is to keep it from sagging in the middle. I can feel them in here, but because of the same height, this is an experiment. And what I try to do is push the six by sixes up on each end, and it gives me about an inch in here, which is not that bad. I, I don't think it's really going to sag. It's on plastic, so if I have to tilt, I can pick up the plastic side by side. It's a little bit of cheating here, but I do like to do a single pour on a canvas. Uh, 
they're more reasonable to experiment with and learn how to work with. Um, cradle boards, of course, are preferred. That's a wooden canvas for those of you that don't know what a cradle board is. Okay, another little tip is I always keep a paper towel with alcohol wetted down here. And I have this little silicone tool that they use for doing hair. Oops, I didn't mean to pull that off. They do for doing hair. I'm going to use this to try to comb out my black and not, not make this whole thing black. So a, a little bit different this time. I have my colors mixed up. You guys saw them. It's already here. I want to get them in this shot here. So we got our colors lined up. Uh, and I'm going to just do a light, light, light lubrication of clear over the canvas. I'm going to warm this slightly just to move it around. And this is why I'm usually wearing three pairs of gloves because I know that I'm going to end up taking that top one off. I'm just trying to lubricate the canvas. I'm not trying to make it wet per se. The resin flows a little bit easier if it has something to float on. Okay, I don't even know if I put enough on here but we'll see. Because it is canvas I'm, I'm trying to be very sparing with this clear base. Just get it moved around to where it's just lubricated actually feels like it needs to be heated up just a little bit more. Anything gets in it, like runaway hair. Oops, I think one of my long hairs is actually in this thing. Wow, that was fun. I do have my hair up, I promise. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to warm that up just a little bit more so it smooths out. Just warm. Okay. So... just kind of want a little bit of this here. This is that stone coat black and I'm going to try to comb it down with my brush. Rather than just have it be solid black. I'll do the same thing on the top here. the less passes the more random it'll go
Okay, so now for the fun part. Well, let's start with the wild jasmine. And if I'm going to swipe, swipe. Wow, that's a pretty hot rhodamine violet pink. just a tiny bit fatter here. Hmm. I don't exactly have that many colors to play with, but see what happens. I was actually going to put the white over after I already had a... Normally I don't put this much gold in, but let's see what happens. Wow, that is gold. Holy moly. That is gold. And here is this interference color. This is the interference violet. It'd be interesting to see what kind of effects we get with this as it floats over the top. I'm actually liking the look of the red plum and the rhodamine violet together. I was hoping they wouldn't fight. I'm kind of get a close up on these before I do anything with them. Make sure my areas are filled in. That's the one thing about putting that clear down. For some reason, you miss a spot. There is that lubrication, even though we try. Okay, I was thinking I might need something to break this up, like a, an aqua, but we'll see. I do have some extra resin if I have to mix more color. Let's just warm this, because I'm, I'm swiping, and I'm swiping with Yupo paper. Now basically I just warmed the resin so I could swipe it. So if you guys saw me do any of my paint pouring videos, you know I liked using the acetate. And uh, the, ac the uh, Yupo paper is a plasticized on both sides. It's floppy like that and the, you want the transparent lightweight. There's different kinds of Yupo paper. I saw Petra use this other, the other day and I realized I could wipe this down with alcohol. I have my alcohol uh, paper here ready to wipe it down so I can reuse this over and over and over again. Okay, let's see what happens. Well, it looks like either I didn't lay it down enough or didn't have it warm enough. There is a lot of paint on here. First time trying to use the UFO, but we know it's going to work. While I still can, I'm going to flip this and use the other side, even though it looks like I lost some of that red on there. And I'll just move this down. Over there we go. Again, I'm missing that edge.
uh, now I'm getting the glide down. It's a little bit different than regular acrylic paint. You gotta really get the paper down in and let it pull it. Oh, okay, that's making me happy. section here that's really Okay, so what I've discovered is I, I comb that black out, and where I comb the black out, I'm getting some cells. But over here, I'm kind of not. There's a little bit here. So, you guys might think I'm ruining this. Here, let me move this lamp. Don't want you to think I'm ruining this. This is where I kind of get lost, but I want to redo this one area here. make sure I'm still honoring our original patterns and that's kind of I don't want to mess with this but I think I'm going to do this 
this. Oops. Missed a spot. There's plenty of gold in this thing. You know how they never turn out how you imagine, right? Still think I should have, could have used some kind of aqua or something to break up all this red and pink, but. That's just the tiniest little lacing of the black along that one gold. I'm going to see if I can't push it around a little bit. So this has had a chance to sit for about another 15-20 oh, minutes so we can see all the patterns that are starting to form. Wasn't what I expected but boy we're getting some really interesting lacing in here. That red plum and the wild jasmine. The incredible lacing. We're getting some beautiful lacing over these corners. Especially over here. Really, really pretty. So I am tempted and then up here in this top right corner also. Really gorgeous lacing happening here. It seems a little bit busy and it's awfully pink. <laughs> and red, which I don't know what I expected by using all that interference violet. Now, all this stuff that's looking all wispy, that's going to be semi-transparent. That's going to dry with kind of an interference changeable 
and that gold streaking through. So I'm looking for a spot that I can do my drop technique on and not ruin my piece. Uh, I'm going to mix a little bit of the... There's so much gold on there. Maybe you can guys see me mix over here really. Yeah, I guess this is going to be the best place to see me mix. I'm just right here on this side getting a tiny bit of resin. These are little one ounce baby, 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 baby salsa cups. And I don't know, because we're using so much gold, I really want to do a... See, I know if I put the bling gold on top of the red, we get some really interesting effects. I've already done it a couple times. It's pretty outrageous. But again, not too much. That one video I did, a couple videos I did, if you can see how little is on the tip of this spoon, just a tiny sprinkle. Because actually the clear will also create some interesting effects. And then I'm going to do um, a bling blue and a bling green. Now you guys have seen me play with the gold and the blue. But because the green will add some effects on top of all this pink and red. Let's do one more color. And I'm going to try to suck these up in a pipette. Not sure if it's going to work because I don't have control. On these little tiles, it's one thing. But to control right over the top of a big painting where I want to kind of do this special uh, cell effect, I'd kind of like to have more control. I'm getting more and more and more and more cells. Pretty cool. Now I wish I could get a side angle or a close-up angle on this. I don't have the same equipment. I really envy those who have that kind of equipment to come and do that side sparkle angle. These cells are really, really, really coming up pretty. Okay, I'm going to try a pipette. These little things. It is moving up pretty slowly. It looks like it's going to take, but you understand once you put resin up in this little pipette and it's slowly building. I don't know if you can see it. I squeeze it all the way out and I'm just leaving it at the edge and it's still filling all the way up. It's still filling. So let the air and gravity do its job. Okay, so I managed to get three of those out of that one. Now this is fairly transparent because of the colors that it's sitting on the top of. You can see what this does, how it reacts to the red. So I'm squeezing all the air out of this and then letting it sit in the corner and draw it up. And it just you just have to be patient and let it keep filling. Because it is, it's still filling, it's still filling it. I don't know if you can see the close up, but the inside of that pipette. I'm kind of liking what it's doing here on this red.
I'll pop those bubbles. Don't worry about them. Give me a second. Done. Bubbles pop. Well, it's the only thing is, is you get going, it's not going up and up. And now I'm in a hurry. And yet, if I was going to do a big piece, a commission for somebody, I'd take my time. For the sake of the video, Now I can speed this along. You guys can see me do this. Oops. Oh, that gold's really pretty on top of this pink. Oh my God. I know you can't see me do this because I got the cup in the way. That is really pretty on that pink. So I'm just going in and adding some patterns. I just kind of decided where I wanted it to go. No, I'm not gonna blow them out. Like I did that one video where they kind of came out messy. Now, the pipette works. It's a very slow process. I can also dip my pipe in, and I'm getting some pretty good luck doing it this way versus squeezing it in, or I'll try to get it at an angle so you can see me squeeze it out of the pipette. This way, you really have control. And I'm going to go smaller and smaller and smaller on this edge so I can kind of end it out on this, bring it all the way out to the end of the canvas. So I'm just squeezing little itty bitty, little itty bitty round bits. I hope you can see that on the camera over here in the corner. So the pipette does pick up a lot, but I got frustrated in time-wise, you know, you want the video to go well, but boy, wow, I cannot wait to show you what this looks like dry, because I know I can't get a real good angle on it. Okay, I got a couple other colors, remember I mixed up some other colors here. So let's get this uh, green. Color I'm not, you guys have not seen me use. Same thing, I'm just gonna blow all the air out of the pipette and suck it up slowly. I'll speed up this part of the video for you, but I can't speed up how fast the resin draws up. The resin's gonna come up in however long it wants to take, and so, I mean, I could hurt. put that green in between those two golds. I think I'm going to grab a little tiny bit of the gold to kind of soften this up.
Well, the pipette turned out to be kind of a uh, bad idea. I'm going to keep trying different things. So I'm back to a, because if I drip it from this container, it'll get messy. But if I take this little wooden coffee stirrer and carefully go back and forth, I'm going to put this interference blue on top of these golds rather than the bling it blue like I did in that little tile. It's really the layering, even though that bottom bling of gold really is dazzling when you put it in anything that's redder, underneath red or orange, it just pops like crazy. But by putting that second layer on, it gives that opalescent effect. And so then when you go out with ones that are just blue like these, they look like they belong because the blue's been put on top of the ones with the gold. They don't look like they don't fit. I know this is where I put that green. We'll fix it. I'll warm this slightly. Just to pack any bubbles. I mean, this is totally just a random thing, but the idea that I can go in and create little sparkle cells and designs in my pieces. kind of crazy and I'll put a little bit smaller one in between them right so it looks like there's a collective and it's funny how the paint just kind of hugs that clear when you're dropping it down making sure I have all my gold ones topped with the blue. So one thing about the art coat, you have an awful lot of working time to play with these. What I'm liking with that straight gold is doing up here in this red and the pink and the gold and the black where they kind of all mix together. I'm not sure if you're seeing this up top where I'm working right now. Getting some interesting, I can't actually actually just stop. I just gotta keep going while the resin's gonna let me work. Again, with the art coat, you've got an hour and a half. But I did an intro video showing you how to mix first, which is, you guys aren't going to be doing that. Oh yeah, I'm liking how that blue is creating some, look at all the colors it's picking up underneath. I'll show you in a second once I get all this blue down. It's picking all the red and the pink up. This is the interference and it's going to dry really clear and it's picking up all those colors underneath. Looks very different from the bling it which forces like the real big sparkly stuff. I like using both the interference and the sparkle. It's adding some... I don't know if I can get away with putting a drop of blue in between there. I was going to try. I don't think I'm going to push my luck. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit further up here. Keep my pattern going. And 
Incidentally, um, trying to raise money for rent, kids. We have to pay the bills here too. So if anybody decides that they want to purchase this little guy, I'll tell you what, these colors would have been perfect for breast cancer month. I know it just passed, but this hot, hot pink just screams. It's really rhodamine violet. I mean, it's a hot red violet. You guys know what I mean, red violet. Okay, we've got two more colors. Now this is the green, so I think I'm going to see what happens if I put a little bit of the straight bling at green down. You see now that looks a little bit too sparkly. So if I have any clear at all left, which I think I do, I'm going to add it to this. One thing you don't want is too much. You just want enough in there for a beautiful glittery effect, but not so strong. I'm going to switch to the blue. That was the green. Let's see what this blue looks like. This is the bling it blue sparkle. Oh yeah. There's some cells up here that I really like. I'm going to try to accentuate by doing this technique too. So I was trying to get up to the top here. Sorry, I'm not talking much. I'm just focusing on making sure I'm keeping the cup out of the way so I don't accidentally drop some on that doesn't belong. Oh. And I'm standing. I just stood up because I realized if I sit down, I can scrape my shirt in the edge of the resin and I don't want to ruin the, that beautiful lacing I had on the edges, so I had to stand up. You notice how that paint is just hugging these drops. Creating beautiful effects in there. Gosh, I, I can't wait for you to see the up close on that, how that dries. That's pretty darn amazing. I want to finish my pattern over here. warm this just a bit. One little trick I learned from Stone Coat because this stuff's been sitting in this cup right here for a while and it felt like it was getting thick even though it wasn't. So when I just heated the canvas, I just kind of went for a brief second on my cup and it made my resin nice and fluid again so I can get all the rest of my drops out. Okay, this is where I think the green is gonna look pretty is on top of all that pink. So even though the pipette helped, 
It is very time consuming. If you're very careful, you can use like a little wooden stirrer. I'm putting it right over the top of it, getting it out, putting my drop out and moving the cup as far away from the canvas so I don't actually drip in it. This is that bling it green. I was worried it was a little bit too bright. I think it'll look really pretty on top of this pink. As this pink starts to hug it. And on top of this gold, it should be quite pretty. Well, this is a great way to fix the canvas when it didn't turn out exactly how I wanted in my swipe. Add an extra little bit of bling to my piece and add some interesting cells. I'm not sure how much the light's picking that up right now. It's pretty interesting. Now, these ones with the gold over here are a little bit faint, so I'm going to see what happens if I drop just a, another layer of green. while I still can. Not sure how I like that. Do I have any of that blue left? Yes, I do. I have some of that interference blue left. I think I'm going to go back to just the blue. I think I'm, again, I made that green a little bit strong and I can tell it. Oh, and as I'm tapping, I'm pulling up some black from underneath there. I'm going to leave this whole area alone. Didn't mean to do that. Okay, let's go back to this green. I'm going to finish this one corner over here. I'll know for next time to go a little even bit more sparing on the green. It's real strong and sparkly. Beautiful color but you just want it for an effect. Now remember, the resin's going to dry clear and the bling it sparkle effects will be behind. The resin will self still self-level, but this looks like you poured a second layer when you didn't. Looks like that was just enough. That looks really interesting. Wow. Still feel like I should put a little bit of the green on, huh, on here just so it looks like it glides into it. This is that interference blue. So these first few ones, I'm going to put a little tiny drop of green on top and let it settle out. And it'll look more like it gradually went to the sparkling green. You'll see what I mean. We'll get a close-up in just a second. I'm going to use all this resin while I've got it made. And then warm it one last time so it settles down. And you know it's just putting a color on top of another color makes effects. And then depending upon where you drop the color, the bling it, you know, sparkling or interference colors, on top of the actual resin art color, you're going to put it behind or on top of what sits behind it. You know, we're getting really great effects. Okay, I think that's uh, good enough. Let's see if we can get some light on this. I do like this new gold. I think it's hot. 
I find it way more sparkly, way brighter. Uh, but of course the word bright gold's already been taken by another company. That's why I'm calling it Golden Diamond. Because it really, really, really has an amazing sparkle to it. Those drops that are in there. So here we start with the green. Wow, that is so blinding. You can't even hardly see. Let's just believe me, it is super, super sparkly green. Um, then we go into the... the interference blue here. There you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, we've got some wonderful cells down here, sparkling cells. Oh, I'm loving what's happening right here in that center of that hot pink. Oh, that's so pretty. And that red. I know I'm going to have to show you guys afterwards when it dries because I can't pick it up right now. But uh, it turned out gorgeous. Anyway, thank you for joining me. I hope that this introduction of the Wild Jasmine and the Golden Diamond has been enjoyable and the little bling it drop technique done with the sparkle and the interference colors. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.